to me, what's so fascinating, one of the reasons that SoftBank's fascinating, given sort of the land grab they've made, but the future of that land grab, because it has been historically supported by, soft, by, by, uh, by Saudi, and unclear, given some of the WeWork news we were talking yeah. about in the last week or two, um, and there seemed to be a fight among investors in SoftBank about whether they would actually be able to invest more in WeWork, how much support actually he has in the future. You know, it's so interesting. Back in September, um, the prince gave an interview where he committed for another $45 billion to a second vision fund. And t talk of that has completely stopped. Um, I, I, my sources have told me that for the moment, that is not on the table. I mean, whether or not it comes back, I, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, events in the Middle East are moving quickly. Um, I think, you know, uh, the, pr the prince had sort of that, that tour um, where he was sort of trying to re re resuscitate his image and it worked for a little bit, but it, uh, the news just kind of keeps, keeps coming back to Saudi and it's hard to say. And, but, but talking about just, just go to the WeWork deal for a second, then I want to get to the larger sort yeah. of um, issue around what Moss is doing and his impact in Silicon Valley and the world, frankly. But on WeWork, what was so interesting was this last investment just last week, and we, we had uh, uh, Adam Newman on, uh, Ashton Kutcher was with him in L.A. This was a $2 billion investment, not made by the SoftBank no. Vision Fund, but no. made by SoftBank itself. And one of the big questions I have, actually, about Masa mm -hmm. is sort of the mix between <laughs> what's the Vision Fund and what is SoftBank proper, if that's what it's called. <laughs> Um, I think a lot of people have that question, especially SoftBank investors right now. Two years ago when he launched, I think it's about two years ago now when he launched the Vision Fund, he made it clear that the Vision Fund is the future of SoftBank. I think that this change with the WeWork deal, it, it, it raises these questions. Um, and also what's interesting about the WeWork deal is that for months prior to the, the announcement, there were all kinds of rumors of it being much of a much bigger size. Right. Um, and you know, now that it's, it, you know, it's still $2 billion, it's still $2 billion, but it is significantly smaller. How much pressure is there around uh, the, the Masasan team at SoftBank Vision Fund, which is the people you, you interviewed, yes. to put this money to work as fast as humanly I think possible? It's, it's, there's a lot of pressure. I mean, I think they've made a big commitment. Um, it's, the Vision Fund is $100 billion, and to put that to work in in startup land is extraordinary. Do any of them privately say to you, this is crazy? That, that actually, say, I mean, people no, have that's, often that's said a size, great question. <laughs> size, is supposed to be the, size is supposed to be the enemy of performance. People say that all the time. Do people internally either even whisper to you, you know what, I work here, I'm making money here, but this whole thing is... is so externally, lots of people yes. say that, and it's so funny. Right before I went in to do my interviews at SoftBank in Silicon Valley, I had all of these VCs who you know, were taking me to lunch to say, ask this question, and they, they all are so flabbergasted and confused. How do you put this much money to work? Internally, it's so different. I mean, it's... And Is this just it's a Kool-Aid drink? Know, I was, was going to say the same thing. Is, is it because they know something um, and they feel the power, or is it a Kool-Aid thing? I think... You know, you've interviewed Masa, and, and I, I did not get a chance to meet Masa personally, but when people who know him talk about him, it's this, well, he's referred to himself as Yoda, and I think uh, he's told people to feel the force. It's, I don't want to say that they're drinking the Kool-Aid, but they really do believe that if they kind of keep pushing forward, I, I think part of it is if they move fast enough, they're going to outpace everyone else. And I think that's sort of the best. And the idea is just buy up everything in sight I think and, so. and hope. I think, I think the idea is that there's this sort of wave of AI that we're on the cusp of, or not even on the cusp of, but we're sort of moving right. quickly towards, is going to you know, have huge right. returns in the future. To, to give the viewer a sense, though, of Masa, and, and you just mentioned this interview, I think we have a clip of it, because he talks about AI and investing. Do we have that, guys? Can we run that? We don't have it. Separately, um, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought we had it uh, re ready to go. Um, when, when you think, though, about what it's going to do to all the other venture capitalists out there, some of whom are trying to raise funds like this, but there are others who are saying this is a failure. I mean, so what's going to happen to the whole industry? Um, I, it's, it's really funny when you talk to VCs now. I mean, one, one guy told me that they view the Vision Fund as sort of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man kind of moving through, you know, from Ghostbusters. Um, I think in 2018, I think there was a lot of fear amongst VCs because 
it felt so big and it was moving so fast and driving up prices and it caught them off guard and I think a lot of VCs were saying we've got to raise more money. I think 2019 there's going to be a shift because you know we're seeing what's happening in the markets right. and um, the, uh, two, two other quick questions. One is around CFIUS. Um, because of his relationship with Huawei, um, Huawei is part of the in, inside SoftBank. I don't know if you know that inside SoftBank they use Huawei servers. There's been questions uh, about whether they're going to be able to continue to buy technology everywhere. Do people talk about that at all? Um, you know, this past week I have, I've, I've been hearing more and more of those kinds of conversations. Right. Um, I don't know that I have more insight than you do, but it's, it's now coming up, um, which is why I think that 2019 is going to be, there's going to be a lot of questions around SoftBank and its strategy that might be different right. than the questions we were asking in 2018. And then the final question, it goes back to Saudi, I guess, all, all again. They committed the money to the first vision fund, and then they committed this money to the second vision fund. Put the second vision fund to the side. Do you think that they're going to struggle in the future making new investments Meaning, even though there's technically a commitment by the Saudis that there's going to be continued pushback just on any investment, or do you think it was specific to, to WeWork? Because I've heard over the years that there have been times when SoftBank has actually tried to make a deal, called up the Saudis and everybody else and said, okay, you have 10 days to, uh, to fulfill the commitment, which is what they usually have to do. They've got to write the check and wire the money. And that literally it's up until like the last second that the Saudis hold the money and don't send it. Um, so I, I think my sense is that now SoftBank is trying to figure out its way forward without counting on the Saudi money. And so I think, you know, this is why this recent IPO was incredibly important. I mean, we'll see how it right. all plays out. Um, I think that uh, there's, you know, a question about, you know, what the relationship between Masa and the Prince are, is right, right now. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't have insight into their personal relationship, but I think what's happened, I imagine, has put some strain right. on, on that relationship. Okay.